Hmm. Where have I seen this art before? I can't quite put my finger on it. Hmm. I'm sure it'll come to me. Real quick, you guys, before we get into the breakdown, I just wanted to let you know that there are going to be some wonky dates on this update notice over on the forums. However, I'm going to be operating under the assumption that all of this stuff is going to be dropping tomorrow as per tradition, along with the banner, except for possibly the new game mode, which looks like it might be synced up with our paydays like League or Absolute War. But with that being said, let's get into the video. <laughs> What's going on you guys, TBR here, and in today's video we are going to be breaking down the update notices over on the official forums, giving you guys all of the information that you need to have in order to be prepared for this latest maintenance, and this next update is looking like it is going to be a doozy, so we have a lot to talk about in today's video, but before we get into all of that more, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get into this update notice, and then we're going to take a look at that reveal trailer for SSK in SS Yuri because you guys already know I am excited. And as always, you guys, if you want to check any of this stuff out for yourselves, links will be in the description, but let's go ahead and get into the update notice and then we'll have one more thread we need to look at and then we can go ahead and react to that trailer. So first things first, they are going to be letting us know that we are going to be getting our newest SS banner in the form of SS King and SS Yuri, so we've known about this for about a week or so and I'm still just as hype as the moment I saw the announcement. So we do have more information in here as far as the charge skill mechanic. We have already done a video breaking this down and talking about the information that we have in front of us as far as this thing is concerned. They didn't go into any more detail with any of this from what I can tell, so basically everything we We've already talked about in that previous video if you guys want to check that out that will also be in the description is going to pretty much be what we know at this point and we're probably not going to get any more information until we actually get the update itself but if you guys want to read through that you can do so otherwise I recommend going and looking at that video because that pretty much covers everything you need to know now the next thing here is going to be the new battle cards. Now these are going to be the new finishers and the option cards here. And all of this card art, as always, looks fantastic. You guys know me, I am extremely partial to that Illusion Dance EX card art, but I can already tell you that that Yuri card art is going to be something that a lot of people are a big fan of. And yeah, so we're just going to leave it at that. Now, when it comes to the new card set, this is going to be the commemorative photo set. It is going to feature the female fighters team, or at least the tr more traditional lineup for the female fighters team. And yeah. Definitely looking good. I don't really have anything to complain about there. All the women are looking wonderful in their SS variants, so not much to say about that. Now if we go down here, we are going to be seeing the reappearing fighters. Now that is of course going to be in the form of SS Kyo and SS Iori. These two fighters have been with us before. This is their first rerun, and as part of a rerun, you are not going to be able to obtain their original stones from awakening them, so keep that in mind. And these characters will be returning with their battle cards. So if you're planning on going for SS Kyo or SS Iori because they're one of your favorites or you just really like them in general, then of course you are going to want these finishers because these finishers are fantastic especially the Keo one for him but the option card is not too shabby however this is good content if you guys want to check out any of my previous videos when these originally came out you can do so breaking all this stuff down I'm not going to go back into it however I would wait and see what the kits for SS volume 4 look like before deciding whether or not you want to go in on this, unless these are going to be personal favorites or things you just need to get memories for. Otherwise, good luck on your pulls if that is the choice that you decide to make. Now, we're also going to be getting Gears of Fate back. Gears of Fate is a fantastic card set, especially for things such as Immortals. A little bit of an isolated use case scenario with this card set, but it is good. So definitely a nice little rerun to see there. So that's basically what you're going to be seeing with your reruns, and you love to see those things happen because they don't do those very often. It's just unfortunate that they do not give us those stones again because I know a lot of people out there would be more enticed to pull if they did have that as an option. 
Now, next up, we have confirmation that the memory exchange for that generic SS memory is going to be returning. So basically what that means is up to two times during this update, you will be able to exchange up to three random SS memories for any SS character and get yourself a generic memory. Not a lot of people that I know of have ever really used this that often, but it is something that they've thrown in there to make generic memories a little bit easier. Now, one thing to note in this update, you guys, we don't have any confirmation yet one way or the other whether or not we are going to be getting a memory carnival there is a photo that is kind of circulating out there of a carnival i believe for cards but take that with a pinch of salt from what i can tell i've looked at the korean side as well as the jp side and then i have checked out of course the global side of the forums and not seen that mentioned anywhere typically when we get carnivals or things like that a lot of the times they're going to be in the following weeks after the update itself so likely we will be seeing some way to get a generic memory however right now we don't have confirmation as to when that will be there is a chance it will be next week or it could be the week after that given how netmarble has done that in the past so keep that in mind you guys if you see that photo circulating i haven't been able to confirm one way or the other where that came from and nobody else seems to be able to either so again major pinch of salt Typically, Netmarble likes to release those a couple of weeks after. That's been kind of their MO or their modus operandi for a while, so keep that in mind. Now, next up here, we are going to be seeing that we are going to have confirmation on all this stuff coming back and all these releases, but also that we are going to be getting Volume 4 Imprint Stones for our SS King and SS Yuri. No information on what those do as of yet but you will be able to pick those up the usual way, which is of course awakening the new characters, and each time you awaken them, you will be able to get a new corresponding stone for that awakening tier. Now, next up here, we have confirmation about the buff dungeon. Now, they are calling this Dymos base, and this is going to be in a beta phase, and this is not actually going to be coming along with the update tomorrow. This is actually going to be corresponding with the Halloween events going away. So basically, in here, it goes into a lot of the rules, but real quick, I want to talk about this so that way when nobody gets confused or anything like that. But you will notice here that the first beta season starts 1031 at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So keep that in mind, you guys. This is going to be something that we are not going to be seeing tomorrow. This is something from the looks of it we will be seeing on Halloween. Whenever the Halloween events cycle out, this will be coming in. So keep that in mind. But if we take a look here, we are going to have some confirmation on some of the rules that go into this. And I'm just going to kind of glaze over this because, of course, we are going to be doing videos videos on this topic whenever we actually have this live in the game, but we'll go through this real quick. And if you guys want to see actual in-game footage of this event, you can check that out. Link will be in the description for yesterday's video where we broke down that latest dev video showing that off. But basically, the long and the short of it is going to be is you're going to have a team of three fighters and three strikers. And this is going to be a dungeon that is tiered sort of like what we see with the Tower of Trials. So basically, between rounds, each time you clear a stage, you're going to have a selection of three different buffs that you can choose from. Whichever buff you pick, will be applied to your team and added to a pool of buffs that you accumulate over these stages. Right now it appears as though there might be 50, so that seems to be what is, we're looking at here. They do also have a prize pool that you can unlock different prizes in the event tab each time you clear certain or specific tiers to this. That's something they'll have in a separate notice we'll talk about momentarily. But basically in here what it tells you is any of the fighters that die in battle will be removed from the formation and will be disabled until you revive them they also mentioned there's a special item that can revive these dead fighters that will be added later so yay more items that they can lock behind a paywall or something ridiculous like that i'm sure it won't be that bad but still i hate when they have to have obligatory items for certain things it's just silly but anyway there are no challenge restrictions when there is an awakened fighter that can be part of the formation so basically there's no restrictions whenever you have your fighters in there so i guess you can go wild with whatever character you want to choose for this and then the cleared stages can be challenged again but the re-challenge won't apply any buffs and you won't get any rewards so there you have it and there you are however that might be a good way for us to test certain things especially at high tiers like characters and so on and so forth so that's pretty much what we're looking at there so basically from the sounds of it and this could all change they're planning to have this update and rotate
update every week with payday like league or absolute war and the nice thing about this is we are going to be able to get rubies for fully clearing this thing if you're able to do so so that's another injection of rubies every week if you're able to get through this only caveat being you need three awakened characters but this is looking really positive overall now this part's really cool. We are getting an imprint stone inventory management system. This has been something that has been long overdue. As you guys can see here, this looks fan freaking tastic. You'll love to see it. This is looking like it is going to be very akin to what we've had forever with battle cards and so on and so forth. It's just that now they're getting around to giving us one for imprint stones. You love to see this type of stuff. This is a quality of life improvement that has been needed for a while. So great, great stuff. Now, next up here, we are going to have new events in the form of a new rush dungeon called Charm of the Original. This is something that we will have a little bit more info over on the Korean or JP side. So if you guys want to check that photo out, I'll pop it up on screen here so you can see what you're looking at with the new Rush Dungeon. But this will be formed pretty much just like any other Rush Dungeon. We've had a ton of these in the past few months, so everybody should be pretty familiar. And it shouldn't be anything that should surprise us. We don't have any idea what's in that exchange shop just yet, but chances are it's going to be more of the same. Now we are going to have a new login streak bonus and outside of that amazing art with that beautiful lady there, there really isn't anything to talk about because those items are largely just going to be stuff that, yeah, I mean it's useful but not anything worth talking about, so we'll kind of move on. Now there is a new KOF Battle Pass event. This Battle Pass is looking much the same as what we've come to expect from these. They are not theming these yet around these limited banners, too much to my chagrin. But as you guys can see here, this is what you're looking at. So this is all courtesy, again, of the Korean side of the forum. But if you want to take a look at the board, there you go. That's what you're going to be seeing with these Battle Passes. Again, these are things that I don't believe we'll be seeing tomorrow. This is something we'll be seeing over the course of the next couple of days. I believe on Friday is when they intend on dropping this Battle Pass, so... We'll break that thing down in depth when it actually drops. I'm not going to get into details about it in this video because it's already going to be a longer one, and that's something that we tend to just do videos on or talk about in other separate videos, so we'll just kind of move on. Now, new packages. These are largely going to be the same as the packages we always see, so again, we aren't going to go much into any detail here. If you've been around for a while, you pretty much know what you're looking at here. So basically, these are all going to be the same things that we've seen with any of these limited banners as far as the value proposition so not a whole lot needs to be said about any of this stuff and then next up here we have the content improvements that they are making to the new friendly match system or at least the updated and improved friendly match system which they did give us a little bit of a glimpse of in that dev video but right here they do break it down in more detail but the most important thing that you need to note about this new update is that the match rules are going to be something that the host can now edit. So you'll see that the fighter level, HP, battle card effects, imprint stone effects, and those sorts of things are now going to be able to be changed on the side of the host, which is really cool because I know a lot of the people that play championship whenever they're sparring or testing, it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to remove all that stuff from your character and then remember to put it back on afterward. So this is a nice little change that they are making and another quality of life change that we definitely love to see. So next up here in the system improvement and error fixes. I'm not going to get into all of these because there's quite a few. However, I did go through here looking to see if the slow-mo bug was addressed at all. And the best that I can say, you guys, is if you go down here to the bottom where it says fixed instances where changing fighters in guild rate are slow in certain situations, I'm hoping that that is meaning that that's going to help a lot in guild raid with the way things slow down so badly. I don't even do team runs anymore because the slow-mo bug is so bad. So I guess we'll wait and see because that's the only kind of allusion to any sort of thing that might have to do with the slow-mo bug at all in here. So hopefully that means good things. But overall, you guys, everything in here looks positive to me. I really don't have any problems with any of this. Now, there is some more information in this other update notice that we have that I'm going to go into that ties into 
all of this stuff. But as far as this particular update notice, that's pretty much the long and the short of it. So we'll go ahead now and we'll move on to the next one and we'll talk about that and then we'll get into the actual trailer. But if we go over to the in-game event notice, like I mentioned, this is going to give us a little bit more information on certain things, but we've mainly hit the big points in this video already. So right here, it's going to remind us about that rush dungeon, which we already talked about. Again, they don't have the actual photo of the thing, which is funny to me since it's floating around out there. But I digress. If we take a look here, there's the login streak again. We've already talked about that. Now right here, this is where they give us more information on the battle pass. So in here, this is where they're going to give us basically the breakdown of everything. And again, I'm not going to go into all the details on this. We'll talk about this when it actually goes live. This isn't something that largely I feel like we need to talk about in today's video. But this stuff, as you will notice here, is going to be available at 9 p.m. on 1028. So again, this will not be live tomorrow. This will be live basically at reset the next day. So that's kind of what you're looking at there as far as this battle pass in case that confuses you. Now right here, this is where they confirm that we can get the new imprint stones for Awakening King and Yuri, as well as those elite enhancement hammers upon awakening them to tier 4, and then that 1000 rubies upon awakening them to tier 5. So this is something that we have had pretty much with all of these limited banners for the most part. So not anything new there. And then we have more confirmation on Dymo's base and kind of the plan for the seasons for the beta run. Again, not much we need to talk about, but there is information right here that's new. So this is basically going to be in your event tab, I'm assuming, the different things that you can get unlocked for going through different levels of Dymo's base. And I looked through here, there's some pretty good stuff. Those Awakening tier capsules, you're getting a hundred of them, so that's really good for a lot of players out there that are having trouble getting those. I know a lot of players have trouble accumulating those, especially people who are kind of intermediate to the game, but that is really nice to see. You're also going to be getting 20 of the All-Star Fighter Summon tickets, which at this point is whatever. And then I was kind of surprised, but for clearing level 50, you only get 500 rubies. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's cool, it's rubies, but it's not anything super, super special. So, anyway, you guys, that's what we're looking at with this update. If anybody has major issues with this update, uh, whatever. I mean, it, it looks positive. I'm super happy with it, and they even if King wasn't involved, I'd be super happy with this because we're getting a new game mode. We're getting a bunch of stuff to do. None of this sounds like it's going to be cancerous at all. The biggest thing that I'm worried about is whether or not the slow-mo bug is being addressed here. I don't know if it is one way or the other. There's possibility, I suppose, but I don't know. So we'll have to wait and see. Outside of that, if people are worried about a memory carnival, don't worry. We're going to get a generic memory in some way, shape, or form soon. They typically like to kind of space that out a couple of weeks or within a week after these types of events go live for whatever reason. We've talked about how that's dumb in the past, so I'm not going to go into it anymore here. But keep in mind that that will happen. So it isn't anything to get up in arms about. But anyway, you guys, with all of that being said, I'm going to get to the main event of this video, what I've been waiting for. Let's go ahead and break down and react to the SS King and SS Yuri reveal trailer. Man, I'm hype! All right, you guys, so if you want to check this trailer out, link will be in the description, but man, I've watched this now a couple of times, and it is... These characters look great. They both look fantastic. I have no issue whatsoever. The one thing I do take issue with in this trailer is the fact that there are still a lot of little details about these kits just on a surface level that they don't really go into. Like, for instance, we still have not seen what the wind-up looks like at all for King's Charge version of Venom Strike, or at least double Venom Strike, so interesting i suppose but the nice takeaway here from this stuff is one the animations look great and these finishers as predicted are nice and long so overall these are starting to look pretty solid overall we'll have to wait and see what the actual kits look like but when we take a look at the animations here i'm pretty happy with what i'm seeing so let's slow it down here and kind of take it more at a slower pace and see what there is for us to see so basically when it comes to yuri 
Yuri, to me, is looking really nice. This character is looking like she's going to be pretty quick. She looks like she's going to have a decent amount of multi-hits. She looks like she's going to have some decent range on these skills as far as the animations are concerned. They're pretty quick as far as the startups. So I'm not too concerned about either of these characters right now from what we can tell so far. I'm more concerned about the things that Netmarble's been hiding from us. Now this is going to be her core finisher here. Not looking too bad. Looking like it's probably going to be a strike based finisher as predicted and that is always something you like to see but then of course we get to king and she is looking absolutely gorgeous as far as the skills that they chose for her i'm very happy with her overall kit the one skill that they don't show here is of course tornado kick which we have confirmed from that previous footage is going to be the s3 so as a zoner which king is definitely known as being one of the best zoning characters in all of the king of fighters from the mainline games this is going to mean very very good things for her as far as PvE is concerned. So time will tell with both of these characters, but if you're a fan of either of them, and there's a nice slow-mo for all of you weirdos out there, don't say I never did anything for you, but <laughs> when it comes to these characters' potential here, I think that they are in a really good spot, especially when you take a look at both of these finishers being long cinematic finishers. Neither of them are going to be grab skills from the looks of it, so in general, these things should bode very well for their overall performance of course until we actually get what is under the hood and what is going on with the skill effects we're not going to know anything for sure but in general i do think that it is safe to assume that both of these ladies are going to be meta or at least they're going to be characters that are going to be super solid but in the end though i don't really have any major concerns and in general the biggest thing right now that i'm concerned about like i mentioned is what the charge up animation is going to look like for king for that s1 and then i am very interested of course to see what's under the hood for these kits but as a start this looks really good and again the character art for both of them looks phenomenal i got the king that i've always wanted which is of course the king of fighters 13 king i love that look she looks gorgeous there's a little bit too many jiggles going on there for king but you know it is what it is they're gonna spice it up for this game i'm sure so Anyway, you guys, that's going to do it for me, but let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about this update. I feel like this is looking like it is pretty solid overall. You guys let me know your opinions in the comment section. I will be back in tomorrow's video to go ahead and break this update down when it goes live. But until then, smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you all tomorrow. We're finally getting a fast king. Continue.